So, sitting next to me is the one and only Joyner Lucas. What's up, what's up? Thank you so much for being here with me, man. Thank you Appreciate for having it. me here, man. Appreciate you. Bro. Awesome. So this is the Free Thinkers interview series, man, but I'm going to just dive right into it. Let's do it. Um, you know, I'm a fan of yours. Appreciate and, you. And um, I think like a lot of people, I'm not going to say most, but like a lot of people, I got put on somewhat early when you dropped the Ross Cappuccini video. Right. Right. That was a, definitely a milestone for you, I'm sure. Yeah. There's a lot of fans that came from that. Yeah. And I, I noticed that ever since then, you've been very consistent with the high power visuals. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit of why, about why it's so important for you to do that and uh, why you put so much focus on, I'm sure, putting fire videos out. Um, each video and record has a different concept, and these are things that I've uh, been wanting to talk about for a long time. Each issue, such as Ross, um, which pretty much covers the topic of trust. I'm sorry, which covers the topic of suicide. Heavy one. Champagne for everybody, which covers the topic of forgiveness. So these are, all these have uh, points, yeah. you know, and there's reasons why I create these records. And this is the way that I express myself and how I see the world and how I want the world to kind of see the world. Yeah. And um, I pretty much use music videos and, and uh, my art to convey that message. Dope. And don't forget happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's, that's a fire visual right. as well. Happy birthday is another um, one. Yeah. So you mentioned like the theme. Right yeah. a, around all these different ideas. Mm -hmm. What's your process like when it comes up for the music video? Is it like I have this visual concept well, look, I want to get out first, or is it always the song first? It's always the visual first. So wow. I'll be thinking of ideas for, you know, videos, and then I build the song around the video. So I pretty much write the music, uh, the video treatment first, and then from there I go into creating the, uh, creating the record. Yeah, dope. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, a little contrary to what most artists do. Right. right. Well, I take the video first approach because that's pretty much where my, yeah. you know, that's why my fans love me, and that's the that's the reputation that I built. And you know, I'm I'm not trying to be like anybody else, so I can only yeah. do what I do. You feel me? Respect, yeah. respect. Um, are you also a heavy consumer of videos? Do you watch other people's music videos or? Yeah, sometimes I do. A lot of times I don't because I don't like to be influenced right. by different ideas and stuff. You know, I kind of like to just use my own mind and brain yeah. and you know it's it's just natural for people to get influenced so I try to stay away from you know being influenced I don't like people to compare my music videos to other things right but a lot of my influence comes from my era you yeah. know growing up yeah you know Eminem era mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and Nas era yeah. Bone Thugs era you know I it. Crossroads I mean yep. those were that that was an emotional video absolutely you know it was those videos it was records like that that created an emotional connection between the consumer yeah. And, you know, the artists, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And those are the videos that I, that, is, uh, that I get. Yeah. Um, That's dope. I mean, I like, the, I like that you mentioned the connection, you know, between yeah. just like the artist and the fan. Yeah. And I noticed that obviously even with the new album that you dropped, yep. right? There's that phone number there. Yep. You know, and I know that you've always been someone who is important. It's important for you to connect to your fans. Absolutely. And you even use platforms like Superphone, yep. right? Yep. So talk to me a little bit about like why that connection is so important, you know, outside the video, just right. like in general. Right. Talk to me about I believe that. the connection is very important for artists to have uh, with, the, with the consumer um, because everything now is so social media driven. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the times, I mean, it's, how, do, how does an artist connect with, with, I mean, how does a fan connect with their artist now when it's just, you know, they have IG pages and Facebook pages, but there's thousands and millions of fans that's <clears throat> right into them and, um, you know, hitting them up and commenting. And, you know, you can't really respond to everybody. So, right. you know, I, that was my way of trying to, you know, let the fans know that, you know, I want you to, I want you to, you know, I want you to be able to hit me up on a personal level and yeah. I might just pick up, I might just answer, I might call right. you back. You know what I'm saying? But that was basically me connecting on a personal level. With, with my fans and I think that that's extremely important. Have you gotten a good response like from doing that, putting the number out I mean, there? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm the you. first person that named, you know, an album or a, a, a project, shall I say, yeah. af, with, you know, after a phone number. You yeah. know, it's been done, you know, put, you know, the number, putting a song, you know what I'm saying? Right, like even Soldier Boy with the right, early right, right. on or Mike early, Jones, right? Mike Jones of, it has done it, you know. Um, but I think you definitely took it to another but level. But I took it to another level and I figured out a way to, you know, utilize that and, um, now I'm able to connect my fans and send them 
all the music videos first. They'll receive that first. They received all the, you know, messages oh, about where I'm gonna be at first. They'll receive, you know, uh, all the merch that that drop. They get to see it first. So it's just a way of them just getting the early access to everything that's going on. That's what's up. Yeah, that's what's up. And I think I think you're gonna see more hip hop artists and artists in general probably follow your footsteps when it comes that's to. That's fine. That's fine. That's that's what it's about. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, so you had mentioned a, a couple minutes ago just like how we're in a social media world right now. Yeah. But I also, I saw one of your tweets recently. You were talking about like, you were like, if I wasn't joining Lucas, I probably wouldn't even have social media. There's been times in the past, you know, about four years, five years ago where I would, when I wasn't anybody yeah. and I would, I would go on a little, you know, a, a hiatus from social media and I would delete my, my Facebook and Instagram just because I feel like it was so negative. Yeah. And, you know, I just felt like that, you know, negative energy is extremely, you know, I'm very sensitive to it. Yeah. Um, I'm very sensitive to energy. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm really very sensitive to um, vibrational energy and, yeah. you know, sense of, uh, you know, spirituality. And I'm real, you know, I'm, I'm real sensitive to, you know, emotion. I'm sensitive to positivity. I'm sensitive to a lot of stuff. I can read body language really good. And, you know, a lot of that stuff affects my day, you know, Absolutely. And, it, and it affects a lot of people's day. Um, with or without them knowing it. With or it. without them knowing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So just by me, po you know, I wake up in a good mood and I'm happy and I I'm on, you know, social media and I see, I'm see i seeing, you know, dogs getting, you know, abused. I'm seeing, right. you know, animal cruelty. I'm seeing, you know, people judgmental of other people. I'm seeing all this stuff and, it, you know, it's, 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 it slowly starts to put me in a, in a downward yeah. mood and, and I notice it carries me, yeah. you know, carries with me throughout my day and, and, and I don't like har harnessing that, that negative energy. So... Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes I, I think about, like, if I wasn't who I was and I didn't have to connect with my fans like that, right. then I won't have a social media. Right. You know what I'm saying? Respect. And I can tell just by that answer alone, but a number of other things, that you're very conscious of mental health. Absolutely. Right? And just the understanding that, yo, these things affect us Absolutely. as people. Absolutely. So for you, in the context of, like, hip-hop, tell me about your perspective on, like, mental health and the relationship it has with hip-hop. Because I feel like sometimes hip hop has not always been like a platform where people are jumping out to talk about mental health. There's a, I mean, yeah, a lot of people aren't talking about mental health. A lot of people aren't talking about a lot of things because hip hop has kind of been, you know, a place where everybody likes to follow everybody and whatever's working, whatever trend is going on at that time is what is going on at that time and people are afraid to be themselves and yeah. talk about what's really affecting them and uh -huh. talk about what their life is really like and talk about how much money they really got right. and talk about all these things that I'm not afraid to talk about Real you talk. know what I'm saying yeah. and I, I never wondered you know I always wondered coming up like how come you know artists don't really say what it really is and it's because they're afraid of being judged yeah so you know one thing that I wanted to let people know you know when you know in the record I'm sorry is that you know it's okay you know it, it it's okay to connect with this record. It's okay to feel these things, and I want to let. I wanted more people to come out and talk about it, and, and, and call that suicide number and get yeah. some help if they felt like that. Yeah, you know, respect, hella respect for that. Yeah. Um, and one of the things, you know, I want to talk about the album a little bit. Um, throughout there, I really liked how you had the theme of bringing the voicemails. Yeah. As the skits yeah. throughout, which yeah. obviously ties really well into the name of the album, yeah. etc. Yeah. Um, but there was one skit in particular that caught me, where uh, it was the bull left the voicemail. And he was just like, "Who you think you are to give that advice to a child?" Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, that sat, I sat on that, and I'm just like, "Damn!" But like, if not you, someone who is very transparent right. about a lot of the things that you go through, a yeah, lot of yeah. the things you care about, yeah. why not you? Right. So right. I guess my question to you is like. Do you feel that way, the way the bull was leaving that voicemail, right? right. Like, you're not worthy to give that advice. Right. And if not, what is your barometer of, like, who should be giving that advice, right? I feel like, I feel like, you know, not just with that voicemail, but, you know, in a lot of other voicemails or even in life in general, I feel like you should have a certain qualification to, you know, give advice about anything. If I didn't yeah. have some level of experience with, you know, with the suicide thing, I wouldn't even be qualified to talk about that. Right. You know, um, as far as Just Like You, you know, a lot of these records is, is um, a reflection of, you know, what I've seen growing up, what I've been through growing up. And, right. you know, in that case, it, it gives me the qualification to talk about such things. So, um, and there's some people that shouldn't be qualified to give advice. You right. Know? You shouldn't be qualified to say certain things if, you know, so... That felt that voicemail was very important. You know, absolutely, what I mean? absolutely. Um, and one yeah. of the things that it led me to to think about was just like that idea of who's qualified and who's not. I think with the idea about social media that you right. spoke on, it's like I feel like a lot of people who know better and know right and who are qualified to speak up don't. 
Yeah. Whereas like the people who don't really know shit, they're they have no qualms about yelling to the yep. rooftops, right? Yep. Yep. So it's like, where do you think that like the role of like leadership comes in for artists, right? Who build a platform? Like, do you think there's any responsibility for artists to be leaders and like stand up for certain things? Yeah, I I, I believe um, depending on who, what who the artist is. Okay. Again, it goes that back to qualifications. Right. You know, I don't want to see an artist. You know, um, I don't want to see an artist. Like, in, in certain artists, like, Lil Bow Wow has talked about things that he shouldn't, and the people have been like, shut up. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't <laughs> even be talking about that, or you shouldn't even say this because you're not yeah. qualified to. Yeah. You know, R. Kelly put a tweet up the other day or some, something, and people are like, why would, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, absolutely. And people are like, why would you say that? Like, right. you're not even qualified to make a joke like that or say right. that because, you know, you've, you've been guilty of yeah. doing certain things. So I feel like depending on the artist and the, depending on their brand and depending yeah. on who they are yeah. and how much people respect them facts they can, they should you know definitely speak up okay um but i don't think anybody should speak about certain right. things okay you so 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 saying? so from your perspective the messenger plays a role definitely, in that message because okay. it, it plays a role in whether or not the people are going to respect um the person saying it or they're going to you know, judge the person saying it based off of their qualifications of them not being able to. You right, understand no, what I'm I hear saying? that. I hear that. So it depends. If Jay Z says something, you know, and he did it with with uh, with four, you know, four, four. With four four four. Yeah. You know, or, or in the other record, um, still nigga. Facts. You yeah, know, yeah. The, he, the OJ joint. The OJ joint. Yeah. You know, and people were like, "Dog, this is crazy. This is woke." But if yeah. somebody like. If Bow Wow, uh, uh, <laughs> not to keep throwing Bow Wow under the bus, right. you know, but, but I got you. You get what I'm saying? If somebody else, you know, that didn't have those qualifications, you know, to try to make a record like that, it wouldn't work. J. Cole could do it, you know, yeah. Kendrick. There's certain so, people so let me that ask you this then. Things. Back kind of to tie back to that video thing, right? There was a really powerful video that I saw late, uh, recently, just as a hip hop consumer, yeah. right? Um, the boy XX Extension. Yes. Did you see the new one he put out for uh, Look at Me, the video? Yeah, I've seen that. You didn't see it yet? I've seen it. Oh, you saw it? I've seen it. So for him, right, there's like some context to right. what people believe is, about him as a person. You, what, you're is, right? what you're saying is the same thing that I just said okay. about people feeling that he's not qualified okay. to talk right. about certain things like that because he's been guilty or uh, maybe not guilty, but allegedly, you know, right. allegedly been, you know, the finger's been pointing at him about, you know, whether or not he abused or whatever he did, but people right. felt like he's not qualified. Right, right, right. And right. I, I did see the video. Yeah. And I had was, me torn, right? Because yeah, I'm like, yeah. yo, what you just did with your platform is yeah, dope yeah, yeah. what you said was dope yeah, yeah. but who you are might not line up with that exactly you know exactly okay. you know what i'm saying so it's like i think he and you know these are not just things that are allegedly but these are things that came out of his own mouth that people right. feel like you shouldn't have said that or you shouldn't have done that because it conflicts with what you're saying that you believe in when right. you just said that you just hope that you know your dick goes down somebody's little sister's throat but at right. the same time you're saying it just doesn't make any yeah, sense saying you, equality you, is important and, 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 so right. in, that, okay. in that sense you know it just doesn't make any sense but yeah. I think he's a great artist yeah. Um, yeah. very different um, I loved his project I thought his project was amazing yeah. actually I was very surprised because I didn't think I would like it and, I, thought, and, I, and I loved it yeah. you know? I almost was wasn't sure if like he was pulling a fast one on us all by just like sparking <laughs> up the controversy yeah, yeah, or what. Yeah, yeah. But we'll leave that alone. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I could tell just from listening to this pro this newest project yeah. was I could tell you're really a fan of the music and the history of hip hop. Yeah, right. For sure. And um, I thought it was super special that you had Mystical on there. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that, bro. Like, just because that's a legend, and I know that you know you had a previous relationship with like Busta Rhymes, right. and, and, and the, legends like that. So the crazy thing is, I never met him. Still, I still haven't oh, met Mr. Man, Good. word. Kind of let down a little bit because, you know, <laughs> um, when we did the track initially, it was it was a connection. My manager had, you know, a relationship they had, whatever, and uh, you know, he did the verse, sent it through the email, you know, whatever the case may be, okay. something, you know. Verse um, was hot. Appreciate it, and I, and I yeah. thought I thought it was dope too, which is the reason why I let it, you know. Yeah. And um, I thought maybe after that, you know, I, you know, he'd reach out or you know, we would talk or, you know, whatever, and and. and even to this to this day, I haven't. I never haven't yeah. received a phone call. And again, that that record got in the, the Madden joint. It's gotten the Madden. Game, you know what I'm Congratulations saying? Congratulations like, for that. I appreciate Absolutely. that. So I just feel like you know, at the very least, like yeah. you know what I'm saying. But I understand. It's time, Mystical. Through, what's up, bro? He's going through his own thing right now. Sure. Shout out to Mystical. It's not a problem. No, it's cool. Sure. Um, and, and my last question, man. I, I also um, I was on your social media at one point, and I saw you had a picture of your fam, of uh, your parents, and they had like the yeah. tats. Yeah, they yeah. They were just showing hella support. Yeah, yeah. Um, for someone, you know, in your position, man, where you're gaining a ton of success, yep. um, 
early on and even now, how important do you think it is for creatives to have that support system? It should. Everybody should have that support system. Um, I was lucky enough to have, you know, two parents that, you know, definitely show support. Um, you know, my mom, you know, she's a heavy supporter. My pops, you know, he's he's a heavy supporter. He's at all the yeah. shows, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Comes with me on my media runs and stuff like that. You That's know, fire. I want him to come with me and... You know, he doesn't want anything from me but to just support. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And my mom, it's the same thing. She just wants to support. You know, they got tattoos of the FAD I movement. That. You know, yeah. they got all that. And I'm very grateful for that. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, shout out to shout out to my mom's pop. That's dope. But what's next? What can, what can we expect next from Joyner Lucas, man? Like, again, I've been following you for a, f- a couple years. Um, but for, let's say, someone who may be a new fan or maybe isn't a fan at all, um, what should they expect from Joyner Lucas over the next one year, five years? Like, what's what's in the cards for you, man? Um, a lot more concepts and visuals that needed to be touched on that haven't been touched on yet. Word. There's lots of them. Right. Give, give me one preview. Like, what's one concept that you like? Yo, I'm about to fuck this. I'm about to fuck your head up with this one. Like, I feel like if I did that, then it gives somebody ah, else room to, t- to, okay. to do it before I do. Ah, and I don't enough. want that to happen. But, you know, I will say that. You know, I'm just, again, I'm just, you can always expect deep visuals from me. And at the same time, though, no, I want you to know that, you know, as, as, as much as, you know, the, the visuals and the storytelling reflect who I am, um, and that's a huge part of who Jordan Lucas is, and I pride myself in that. Yeah. You know, there's, there's also other records that don't really have the storytelling, you know, aspect sure. of it that, you know, yeah. kind of thump too and they got they got their own little you know vibe to it and it's real different but it's, it's yeah. still dope so you know what? um as you said that when you said you know you got the other records as well yeah, yeah. i gotta ask this too because one of the things i noticed about you that i really appreciate is i feel like you keep the remix culture alive right right right, right? yeah with i like, love doing that with, right with I certain jokes you jump yeah. on and it's fun and that's good for the culture yeah yeah um how do you feel about that because not everyone still does that yeah. do you think that's an important part of hip-hop i, I used to be against it Word. I was against like people remix jumping over the, other people's the, beats. What, the, the panda John you got on? Right, but you when got I did on the mask off right, DNA. I did like, mask off DNA and panda. Those are the three I did. Before I did panda, that was the beginning. That was okay. the start. Before I did panda, you know, even years before then, I was like, bro, like I don't want to ever want to like, because there was so many people doing that, and I'm yeah. like, bro, like the original song is dope, and like, no, I don't mind trying to hear somebody over the same beat and like. Because they followed the same pattern of the lyrics, they followed right. the same hook, they followed, they just changed the words and just, you know what I'm saying? So when I did it my way, right, put your, I just cha- I, I made it Jordan Lucas record. Right. This is what I would do over this beat. If this was my beat first, this is yeah. what I would do. And, you know, the Panda record just stemmed from me just being pissed off about hearing a million remixes over that. And I'm like, yeah, Yo, you know and what? No one did even, it justice, you're right? You're not even doing it right. Like, let Facts. me show you how to do it, you know? Facts. Mask off, I was bored. And that beat was so crazy, I couldn't help it, bro. Facts. I was like, bro, I can't help it. I have to do mask. So it was called Mask On. And yep. I'm like, mask off. Yeah. Like, it's time to take the mask off. And um, mask off, put the mask on, whatever the hell it was. It was. And, and then it. the DNA, then DNA, Kendrick joint, a lot of, there was no remixes to that. Yeah, you were one of the first. people afraid to touch, yeah. you know, a Kendrick record. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But... Just because a lot of people not qualified to try to people, touch a Kendrick exactly, record. Exactly, exactly. It's about qualifications at the end of the Facts. day. And if you're not qualified to touch certain records, just don't Can't touch do them. It, and people right? haven't done them. You know what I'm saying? But I did my thing on it. Um, I felt like I, 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 I brought Jonah Lucas, you know, to the record. I started it off like Kendrick and flipped it. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. Okay. And we'll end it like this. So a big audience of, of Rec Philly is yeah. young creatives, right? Yeah. People who aspire to be, you know, full-time creatives, mm-hmm. photographers, artists. Um, where you are now, you know, a lot of people would die to be, they, they would kill to be where you're at, yeah. right? What are the things that you feel like you've learned now that you've been in the industry for a little while that you think it's important for a young creative mm-hmm. to know? So I would, you know, a couple of years ago, I would have killed to be in my position now, too. Exactly. I'll tell you that. It took a lot of hard work to get where I'm at, a lot of sacrifice, um, a lot of time and energy spent on perfecting my craft, mm-hmm. you know. And um, I would say that, you know, this is not just, it's not just a game with fun and games. Right. You know, it's not just, you know, just turn up and, you know, unless that's your lifestyle. You know what I mean? And it's even not all then, just being in the it's lights. It's not right? all just being in the lights. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of interviews. It's a lot of media runs. It's a lot of grunt work that you don't want to do, but you have to do. It's a lot of talking to people you don't want to talk to. It's a lot of relationship building. It's, and this game is just full of, you know, it's, it's politics. And there's a lot of stuff involved that I don't think people are aware of because they don't see that side of the game. Instead, they see the glitz and glamours and the money and, you know, everything else. So um, 
I was told this a long time ago that, you know, I, I was in for a rude awakening in this game, and I didn't All understand, right. you know, when my man Sky Zoo, you know, Sky Zoo, shout out to Sky Zoo. Yeah, that's a legend right there, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, I didn't understand when he told me, you know, about five years ago on the phone, like, bro, trust me, this game right. is not what you think, bro. And I'm like, what you mean? Yeah. I kept saying, what you mean? What do you yeah. mean? I'm explain it. How do you know? I can't explain it, but you're going to yeah. see. And I've got to see. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. a different person now because of it. Yeah. And um, this, But that's this, that's to make sure you want it, though, because it's not for 100%, everybody. 100%. You know, you know, so know what this mean? game is no different than the streets, bro. Like, right. It's literally, I'm going to say that this game is, the music game is no different than, you know, being in the streets. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of fuck shit that go on a lot of hate and shit a lot of people trying to block your success a lot of people trying to take from you a lot of right. people trying to take your spot a lot of you know shit that you have to do that you don't want to do and then, and then on top of all that you know you got to keep creating great content yeah. and keep doing the things that you're supposed to do and you know with consistency consistency right. you know what I'm saying so that. that's what I would tell you man it's, it's not easy Cool. Yo, man, I appreciate your time, bro. I this has been dope. You. Thank you, bro. Uh, Thank so you. this has been another installment of the Free Thinkers interview series. Mm. Sitting here with Joyner Lucas, Will Toms. We out. Once again, what's up? This is Joyner Lucas, and you are now tuned in to the Free Thinkers interview series. And we back here at the Trocadera in Philadelphia. I'm about to go on stage and kill shit. You already know what it is.